Hello, my name is Eduardo. I'm a partner in solutions architect with AWS, and I have the pleasure of having you here today, Mark. Hey, I'm Mark Brown. I'm also a partner solutions architect with AWS, and we're with IBM's uh, alliance team here at AWS. And we are going to talk about today uh, IBM WebSphere application server on AWS. Mark, we see a lot of customers reaching out to us, and they're migrating IBM applications to AWS, and often we see WebSphere. Well, WebSphere is an integral part of a lot of IBM product lines to start Correct. off with. It's used to distribute them and load balance them, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, yeah uh, so it's, it's typically a part of any migration. Correct. So you see, you see things like FileNet runs on WebSphere, right? Yes. And then you see customer built applications running on WebSphere. And they so. do a lot of integrations using WebSphere to deploy the things that they're going to integrate with. Correct. Yes. So what are some of the options that we're going to talk about today? So the first thing is uh, customers can do a lift and shift of their WebSphere servers to AWS, right? They can use uh, AWS VM import export to bring in their own machine images, yeah. right? So they can bring their golden images from on-prem from VMware, for example, and import those as AMIs on AWS, and they can spin up EC2 instances yeah. that way. It's just a server-to-server -server move, right. and IBM uh, tells us the licenses will transfer one for one, um, unless they're on an ELA. But yeah, this is a straightforward move. And there is a there is a, a metric right for the license that is an easy one, like something like seven TP views is the typical yeah. metric. Yep, there's a there's a conversion formula. Um, your customer rep with AWS or your IBM rep can give that to you as well. Cool. Now, if you have, a, let's say, thousands or hundreds of servers, if some, <laughs> some customers do have that with WebSphere applications on-prem, they can use the AWS application migration service to bring right. all those VMs and even installations running on bare, on bare metal to AWS, right? So a lift and shift is going to look something like this, right? Uh, we see here a, an architecture that's showing we have WebSphere uh, application server, the classic WebSphere application server, so was MD. And we have here a, a layer where we have our uh, WebSphere deployment manager. And then we can use an auto scaling group here um, to make sure that we always have an active instance of the deployment manager. The deployment manager doesn't run any customer applications, it's just used to ma right. manage and configure a WebSphere environment. And it keeps the configuration consistent across all the WebSphere nodes where your actual applications are running. You, no. You've noticed that you've talked about the layer going across, which is uh, network separation, if you will, between uh, the right. management nodes and the worker nodes for WebSphere itself. You'll see what we call availability zones uh, coming on the up and down. Correct. That's for your high availability. Essentially, you've got two things in your same network. One in the network over here, that's your primary. Over here is your backup. And you have automatic failover, which is the things in the middle. Correct, and that's important because we see several customers asking us how do they deal with disaster recovery. Right. And often what happens is that they have something like a metro region DR where they have two data centers like 30 or 20 miles apart. So using this deployment across availability zones will help them with that, right? Correct. Oh, cool. So the other thing that customers can do, right, is that um, they can replace, uh, WebSphere usually comes with the IBM HTTP server. So if customers want to simplify the deployment when they bring to AWS, they can easily replace IHS, the IBM HTTP yeah. server, with an application load balancer. And if they're running static content on uh, IHS, they can even use Amazon S3 to host static content right. on their websites, right? So the reason why you see two ALBs here is because if customers want to separate traffic from the deployment manager to the actual applications, so you have your SREs, you have your uh, SysOps teams that need to access the environment to do management tasks, they can go through a different route to reach the deployment manager, and all the customers reaching your applications can go through a different path to reach the applications in the running the WebSphere nodes. Now, Mark, we we are going to talk about Amazon EC2 here running WebSphere. Yeah. Now, we can use a combination of two different storage types, right? We have to use EBS for the block storage attached to the EC2. Yeah, think of EBS like the hard drive. Correct. On your server. Right. And then if you if you want to have your applications and your configuration files available across different uh, servers, we have an option for an NFS mount, right? Right. Well, that's EFS is what we call it. But Correct. yes, it's NFS. That's what you see here. It's a, it's a networked file system, and it would be it's a service that's available to everything Correct. In, the, in that area. Right. So the customers can take advantage of that to make sure that the, whatever application and configuration files they have deployed on WebSphere are available across all the servers. Right. 
Now, other things customers can do here is that they can use AWS Certificate Manager to bring their own TLS certificates or generate TLS certificates to do uh, data encryption in transit. They can use AWS TMS to encrypt data at rest. And they can use Amazon CloudWatch. CloudWatch and CloudTrail to do all their auditing logging. Correct. So yeah. they can push all the WebSphere logs into Amazon CloudWatch. Right. Now, there is another way to bring WebSphere to AWS, and it's a re-platform. We see a lot of customers that are still running WebSphere on, on IBM Power. Right. They may be running on AIX on Power or uh, iOS, AS400, for those that's a little bit older. Um, or Linux partitions on power as well. Those also could move over. If they're on Linux on power, that's more or less a straight thing that we like we had just talked about. If they're on AIX or the iOS on power, there may be some issues with the Java to look into. Uh, the, the JVMs, uh, the libraries, are slightly different between Linux and, and AIX on power. Uh, these are things that we can help you with. It typically is going to take them to recompile and redeploy yeah, the application. There's some right. testing that you do. Yeah, well. It's not totally... It's not a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, frictionless. Correct. But it, it does come over, and we have customers who do that. And I think you also have to watch out for the licenses, because there's a difference between in x86, well, I would say, and power-based. Power, right? power is a really powerful processor, and when you're sizing EC2 instances to match what you're using on power, there are some formulas and tables we have to help with that. Right, and these are things that we help customers when they ask us yeah. that information. Right? Now, the other cool thing about replatforming WebSphere on AWS is for customers that want to modernize their WebSphere applications running on WebSphere Classic, they can use the lightweight version of WebSphere called WebSphere Liberty, which is also open source as open, the Open Liberty project. That even runs on AWS Graviton. It has been certified by IBM last year uh, to run on ARM CPUs. So it looks like this if you're running on EC2. And EC2 is where IBM has currently certified uh, WebSphere Liberty to run on Graviton. So if you want to take advantage of Amazon EC2 with AWS Graviton, that gives you a better price performance. Oh, you'll get a lot of cost savings. On a lot that. of cost savings, exactly. For the same horsepower. So, yeah, exactly. So that becomes very interesting. And you see that it's a, a less complex architecture because it's a lightweight version of WebSphere. Right? Yeah, it's Liberty. It's not yeah. the full WAS. Correct. And many of the modernized versions of the IBM software that we talked about, right. if you look at the cloud packs and things like that, they all run on WebSphere Liberty. Right? The cloud packs, maximum application suite, they're all using uh, uh, Liberty, yeah. uh, sometimes in a containerized version, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Correct. But yeah. So it's a very similar architecture, but you have uh, a, a less complex environment uh, to deal with. So you're only dealing here with uh, Amazon EC2 with uh, an auto-scaling group with EC2 distributed across availability zones where you have your applications running on top of Liberty. Now, Mark mentioned the containers <laughs> and the modernized yeah. version, right? So right. that's the next step, right? So how do you modernize your WebSphere Liberty application? You can use WebSphere Liberty again, and you can run it on Amazon EKS or Rosa. So What is Rosa? So that's Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS. That's an excellent question. So for customers that uh, are using OpenShift on-prem and they want to move to AWS, or even they're using self-managed OpenShift on AWS, they can move to Rosa, and it's right. a, a fully managed OpenShift uh, offer on AWS, supported by Red Hat SREs and right. AWS together for, for the customer. Now, what we see here is a, an official partner solution from IBM. So IBM does have this published to, for customers that want to deploy WebSphere Liberty on EKS. And IBM has a WebSphere Liberty operator right. that customers can use to deploy Liberty inside EKS. And then with that operator, they can spin up their own Java applications. And they can use things like Amazon ECR to host their container images. They can do all the integrations that EKS is capable of. They can use an application load balancer as a front So end. with this or Rosa, they can use modernized and containerized applications with Liberty, but they don't have to manage the Kubernetes OpenShift underpinnings or yeah. EKS underpinnings. Correct, that's correct. And like Mark said, you know, this is obviously an example in EKS, but if you talk about the cloud packs and the cloud packs behind the scenes, most of the applications are running right. on web here. That's also Liberty running on the containerized version, in that case on, on OpenShift, right? Right. All right, so these are some of the options that you have available today to bring your web series workloads to AWS. So you can run, you can do a lift and shift to EC2. You can re-platform if you're coming from any option of IBM Power. 
and you can re-platform to Azure Liberty and then also to containers. It's great. All right. So if you are looking at migrating your WebSphere workloads to AWS and other IBM workloads that run on WebSphere, like Mark mentioned, FileMath, right? You know, we are here and to we help have a number of customers doing that today. Correct. Which is how we know these these diagrams work. Yeah, correct. <laughs> That's a good point. So feel free to reach out to us, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.